How? How? I hate this game. This is literally the worst game that I've ever played in my entire life. <laughs> So I think we can all agree that Souls games are incredibly hard. No matter which other games you play, you'll never find a Soulsborne title quote unquote easy. And this is the main reason I wanted to make this video based on a really general topic, very controversial one, if I do say so myself, like I'm using big words. Anyway, determining the difficulty of a Souls game is a very tough thing to do because you can't really say which one's the easiest and which one's the hardest since so many people have have so many different opinions and reasons for those opinions and they're all right because the easiest or the hardest souls game all depends on the person's experience but in today's video we're gonna try and narrow that down as much as we can and somewhat determine what's the best souls game for beginners what's the souls game that's the best to start out with you know what i mean the release of elden ring brought a massive amount of new players to the souls board community but does that make elden ring the easiest souls game to begin with since so many people started their souls game journey with elden ring why don't we just call it a day here and end the video right personally i do not think that's the case yes a lot of people started out with elden ring number one because of its popularity and number two yes a lot of people did start elden ring their first souls game was elden ring but very few of them actually continued what do I really mean by this though? Well, everybody knows that the main reason Elden Ring is currently the number one from software game and it will be number one for a half minute and the main reason for its blew up is because it was something new. It was something from software didn't do beforehand with the other Dark Souls games which we'll get to in a second. The open world, right? The ability to go anywhere you want at any point in time in Elden Ring, that captivated a lot of people. No matter if the game's easier your heart that was enough to get people going right from software game new mechanics looks amazing the lore is a big w why not give it a shot and people did give it a shot and played it and so many people finished it and keep playing it to this day and the reason for that is besides everything we're talking about in this video Elden Ring is a masterpiece and it will always be we finished the game once and we're doing a second playthrough live here on youtube every saturday and sunday and the game is just amazing to play it the second time as it was for the first time but if we're talking about the easiest souls game to begin with remember we're not talking about the easiest souls game here we're talking about the easiest souls board title for starters that means that if you or your friend who has absolutely zero knowledge about souls games decided they want to get into the genre today what game would they start out with completely blind and in my opinion elden ring is not that game and the reason I think so many people quit shortly after they actually bought Elden Ring is because of the fact that everything is thrown at you all at once. More Souls games do that, but Elden Ring decided to bring it up a notch. Not only do you have the massive open world, which can be so overwhelming for a newbie that literally has no idea what he or her are doing, and they're just given this massive open world and the game is basically telling you, here you go, the small intro is done, do whatever you want. And because of that, I think so many people got intimidated and they decided to leave. But of course, there's also the group of people who say Elden Ring is the easiest Souls game of all time. Yeah. Because of all the builds you can make that literally help you so much in boss fights. Like, do y'all remember back in the day when Elden Ring first launched and Rivers of Blood wasn't nerfed? You can literally dump all your points into Arcane and Dex and have like one of the most OP blood builds. That's how I beat Melania actually. Please don't judge me. I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. But overall, if you ask me, I would not say Elden Ring is the perfect Souls game for beginners. And there's good reason why people do leave it behind. Although the real ones do keep on playing them. The, the real Souls game fans, y'all know who you are. You, you keep playing even if you rage, take a break and you come back. Because that's how we do it. Respect. And I would love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. So feel free to drop your first Souls game that you've ever played. And how was your experience with it? And also, what do you think? 
think is the best Souls game for beginners. I'll be checking and replying to every single comment, quote me on this. With that being said though, everything I have mentioned in the video so far aren't even close to facts, they're purely my opinion, just because this is a very debatable and controversial subject. But let's get to the juicy part. I've read so many forums and been in so many reddits and in discords and heard people's opinions, and from my experience as well, I'd like to give my personal opinion on the game that I think is a great start for somebody who's looking to get in the Soulsborne genre, and that is Bloodborne. Now hear me out before you attack me. I have to agree with the people, not everybody. There's a good chunk of people who started with Bloodborne and so many people say when I ask, what's your favorite Souls game? So many of them say it's Bloodborne. And that makes sense. Played Bloodborne, as I said, absolutely loved it. The game is so much fun. Why is it a good start though? First off, it's pretty linear. Bloodborne is nowhere near like Elden Ring. You have a straight path where you can go. Obviously, you can venture out a little bit, but it's a pretty linear gameplay. But the real spice is in its game mechanics. We all know when Bloodborne came out after Dark Souls 2, I believe so, I'm not sure though, because I wasn't into Souls games back then. And with Bloodborne, they introduced the new combat mechanic where players can hit the opponent and regain their health, which was pretty cool, and it's one of the main factors that makes Bloodborne an easier game. But at the same time, there's two sides of this. Some people say that this mechanic where you like attack and gain your last health, it makes it easier, but some people say it makes it harder because you have to aggro. Bloodborne didn't really put that much thought into their defensive mechanisms, they literally made players to go aggressive because otherwise you can't really beat many bosses. And speaking of bosses, I don't know if this is true for everybody, personally I found bosses in Bloodborne very very easy. Way easier than Elden Ring and way easier than Sekiro, which we're gonna talk about after Bloodborne here in a second. I don't know how or why, but I got used to Bloodborne's movement pretty damn easy. I basically rocked the first weapon when I picked throughout the whole game, upgraded it, and it became really strong, and to be fully honest with you, I believe we stayed at Godric in Elden Ring longer than we spent on the last boss in Bloodborne. And generally speaking, I strongly believe that Bloodborne is a good starting point for anybody who's wanting to get into the Soulsborne genre and the community. As I mentioned, it's pretty straightforward and linear, the mechanics and movements are fairly easy to get used to, the only thing that's not easy is the save points, there's very few save points in Bloodborne, at least way less than grace points in Elden Ring, and you will die a lot in Bloodborne, so watch out for that. But another good starting point for your Souls game journey could be a, a lore-wise point of view. If you're wanting to like, get the full lore, I guess, I don't think, are Dark Souls games related? Look, I'm no Dark Souls lore master or anything like that, I just like the games, but you could start with like the beginning, right, like start with Demon Souls and then get into Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, and then play Elden Ring, and then venture out into the different style of Souls games, like Sekiro, Bloodborne. I want you to give a few words to what I think is the most difficult Souls game I have ever played, and that game goes by Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Why I think it's the most difficult game, at least that I've played so far. I do believe that Sekiro is very tough, because it literally goes by get good or get out. You have no builds, you can't change your weapons, the only way to get good at Sekiro is to practice a master parrying, master deflecting, master dodging, and perfect timing. It's one of the few Souls games where you have to be good. You can't make a build or cheese a boss or do anything like that. I mentioned this a ton before on the channel. It's not an easy game. Sekiro is not nearly as open world did as Elden Ring, if I could say that. It's sort of not as linear as Bloodborne, but it's it's definitely a little more straightforward and I kind of appreciate that. Mini bosses in Sekiro are incredibly tough, right? You can sneak up on enemies, which is a big plus. Ishin is a nightmare, right? I'm sure that everybody who played Sekiro, Ishin is no joke. Genichiro to this day is one of my favorite bosses to fight. It took us days to even get to his second phase, but it was so much fun. Ishin took us like more than a week, 100%. Let me know in the comments down below what your experience with Sekiro was. And here we are at the end of the video. Video. And if you're still watching to this point, I'm more than sure you are somewhat enjoying or you enjoy the video, so feel free to hit that like button. And if you're new here and want to see more content like this, keep in touch with us. Feel free to subscribe as well, push notifications so you don't miss any uploads in the future. Have a good rest of the day, guys. Peace out.